Hello everyone. In today's session, we're going to answer the most fundamental question in the world of EMC, which is what is EMC and what is EMI? Okay, I have my in compliance t-shirt on, so you know this is very, very important. And to understand the reason behind all EMC and EMI tests, we need to go back to the time where radios were operated. So in this episode, we're going to demonstrate the concepts of narrow band against broadband noise. Okay, enjoy. First, let's have a look at the demonstration setup. Here is our radio, and uh, you can see we have a uh, antenna uh, extended, and the radio is tuning to a radio station. And here we have a uh, signal generator. And as you can see, we have two channels, and as always, channel two of the signal generator is connected to channel one of the oscilloscope. So we can analyze the signal, we can see the signal in time domain. And we have channel one of this function generator is connected to an antenna. So the idea is going to generate different waves of uh, signals, and we are using the antenna to propagate the wave. Okay. Now, if you look closer to the uh, radio station, currently we are tuning into 15.25 megahertz. Okay, and it's a short wave band. And if I just enable I, the signal, okay, so you can see it is playing some uh, uh, radio um, at the moment. Okay, so now I'm turning it down. Okay, so this as you can see, is currently tuned into 15.25 megahertz uh, signal, okay? And the first demonstration we're going to do is we are going to use the functional generator, okay? And currently you can see we set it up as 15.25 megahertz sine wave with an amplitude of 1 volts peak to peak, showing here, right? 1 volts peak to peak. And if we're gonna, the next is we're gonna turn on uh, channel one and we're gonna see what happens to the radio. Okay, so we're gonna turn up the volume. And I'm gonna turn it on. You see, the moment I press channel one, then this basically generates a 15.25 megahertz signal. And you can see now the radio becomes so quiet, right? So you can see the difference. Now I'm gonna you see the difference. This sometimes gives you the misconception. Some people think, wow, now my radio becomes really quiet. But actually, it is this signal occupying the band of the radio. So this is called quieting in a, in a radio uh, amateur world, right? This is the type of interference, right? So that's our first demonstration to demonstrate that the radio signal channel is now occupied by this interference uh, signal. And we also wanted to stress that this kind of interference is what we call narrow band interference. And this can be demonstrated by simply changing the frequency of the signal. So you can see currently we are using 15.25 megahertz. If I just slightly change the frequency, as you can see, I put in 15.27, okay? So now you can see it's 15.27 uh, megahertz. I'm gonna, again, tune up the volume, okay? And you see, it does not affect the radio as it did just uh, minutes ago, right? So you see, now if I tune the frequency back to 15.25 megahertz, it becomes it became quiet again. Okay, so this demonstrates this is uh, what we call narrow band interference. Next, we're gonna show you that the narrow band interference is not only just you know a 15.25 megahertz sine wave. If you look at this frequency, 15.25 megahertz, let's say if you divide it by 5, that would give you 3.05 megahertz. Okay, so how about if I generate a clock frequency 
of 3.05 megahertz and see what happens then okay to do that let me go to this setup again so what we need is we said 3.3.05 megahertz okay and i need a wave of a square wave okay so now i generate a 3.05 megahertz square wave signal okay okay so you see that's the um, 3.05 megahertz we generate okay a square waveform and the other trace showing is the FFT results of this uh, waveform we only plot up to 30 megahertz so in the center you can see it's 15 megahertz so you can see we will have a sort of 15.25 megahertz harmonics content by using a square wave of 3.05 megahertz so let's see what the effect it has on the radio. So now I'm going to turn it again. Okay. You see, again, this clock waveform, right, of 3.05 megahertz switching frequency or clock frequency has a content at 15.25 megahertz. Uh, it has the same effect as a narrow band effect on the radio. Okay, see, it's becoming quiet again now. Okay, so we have a different setup to demonstrate the broadband interference. Okay, you can see that first we don't have a ground plane in this case. Okay, so we have our culprits in this case, the AC to DC converter that actually uses uh, a galonitride devices in, in this uh, uh, converter. And we know that galonitride devices switch really, really fast. And in this case, because they're doing the AC to DC conversion, so really they switch between zero volts and rectified uh, uh, AC voltage, which is often 400 volts DC. Okay, so fast rising um, DV over DT in this case. And you can see again, our radio is tuning to a radio station. So I just tune it up, right? They are playing, right? I'm going to tune it down again. And uh, we also have our oscilloscope, right? Uh, which channel one is connected to an antenna. And we're really just monitoring whatever the voltage picked up by the antenna when these uh, corporate device is switched on. Of course, we also have the FFT. Right, so next I'm going to switch on the converter and you will see the impact of uh, what we call broadband noise interference. And uh, the really, the, you know, if you look at the difference between broadband and the narrow band uh, is that, remember, in a narrow band, we, we see that if you just tune in to a different frequency, you can avoid narrow band uh, interference. Whereas for broadband type of noise, as we'll demonstrate in this case, is that even I tune into a different frequency channel, my, and my radio, in this case, still pick up the same noise. And the noise is different in this case, right? If you remember, the narrowband noise often makes the radio quiet, whereas in this case, the broadband noise just, you pick up this annoying sound in the radio. So let's have a look. So first I'm going to tune up the radio and I'm going to switch on the device. Okay, now I'm switching on. Right, this is really what happens. And you can also see this is the noise measured in both the time domain and frequency domain. Look at the noise. This is what we call broadband noise, okay? And next, I'm gonna tune into a different channel, you see? Even as I tune in a different channel, this noise is always there. This is what we call broadband noise. You see, even I tune into a different channel, the noise is always there. Hence the definition of broadband noise. Now it's becoming quiet. So now we learned the difference between the narrowband noise and broadband noise. We can really appreciate the reason of doing EMC and controlling EMI. If you trace back the history of EMC testing, you will find 
before Second World War, engineers applied good practice so that they can protect the radio transceiver and uh, receiver that used in warplanes. And of course, since then, uh, the EMC testing world has evolved. So now we do tests on uh, commercial products, automotive, and also military products as well. But the fundamental is always the same. It's all about protecting Guess what? The radio device. So if you trace the modern days, the limits, the emission limits, the immunity limits, and you will find always those limits are re related to protecting radio devices. So I hope you really enjoy this very educational episode and I'll see you next time.